thoughts sometimes in the world there are just some evil people there are just some people that are just think they're above the law the list can go on and on and on we can go to henry ruggs we can go to martha stewart we can go to takashi 69 we can go to whoever right and it doesn't stop in the NFL either. Just because you're in the NFL, that, 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 that doesn't mean it makes you above the law or the CEO or the owner or the president of said company, right? Now, with all that being said, with all that being said, San Francisco 49er CEO Jed York is being sued for alleged insider trading and violations of the federal security laws the San Francisco Chronicle reported. Two lawsuits against York, he which is 42 years old, are connected in his role with the broad with the board of Craig Inc., an educational company based out of Santa Clara, California. Of course, insider trading is going to come from an educational company in California. Oh, I mean like do, do, do we want to go down that rabbit hole? I mean, blue versus red, red versus blue, California being uh, maybe one of the worst states in America. I, 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 this, 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 this might here might put the cherry on top of the pudding. Come on, insider trading from a, from a educational company, my man. Anyways, CEO Jed York is being sued for insider trading and i just when does the nfl have some type of i don't know class some kumbaya some bring in herm edwards and saying stop doing stupid shit <laughs> the nfl players owners Stop doing stupid shit. Allegedly, allegedly. <laughs> uh, well, what is that movie off of? Allegedly. <laughs> Come on. Come on, Hoffy. Says rules don't apply to Hoffy of Man Hour Nation. I don't know. Jesus. When I read this, I was like, good Lord. Good Lord. How fundamentally flawed can this world be cue that intro are you ready for the best damn radio show on the planet man our nation rise up you don't want to be every time no I would like to personally welcome you to I see how I do Man hour out the dark Say that thing Why bring you the host Mike Buck Get calm You know they come on the sports talking what you about to hear right here I second that Go you know that that's us when we talk about sports. That's Giving us. you facts on the field to the core. Uh, Tune in, we need the support. One hour too short, they'll listen some more. Oh no, your station not dropping no music. Starts like Adidas, but Nike just do it. Then four on the fourth, we go for the win. Michael, two seconds, we taking it in. Buff Mike and Combs, you know what's going on. Man, now we're at the dark. No LA, we the big spark. No fourth and inches, won't cut short. Got the best talk and it's all sports. Buzzing more than buzz beaters. We coming live off through your speakers. Go. Hey. And what is up, Man Hour Nation? Michael Bakasha here with the Man Hour. Sure to head over to manhourradio.com. Check out the merchandise page or check out the blog section as well. We got great things happening over there at manhourradio.com. 
But of course, if you are new here, consider liking, consider subscribing to whatever platform you are missing on. And my microphone's getting ready to fall again. I, I don't, I don't know what's going on with that bad boy here. But consider liking, subscribing, and of course sharing the content of whatever platform you guys are listening to us on here. It would be highly, highly appreciated. It is Friday, Friday edition of here of Man Hour Radio. And guys, this is going to be interactive Friday. If you, if you guys want to talk about something, anything you want to talk about, bring it up in the chat and we will definitely discuss it. But one thing I do want to talk about right off the cuff is the sexiest co-host in the land. The man, the myth, the legend, the peanut butter to my ladies, Hoffy. What's up, Big Hoff? What's going on, boss? What up, Big Sexy? Oh, uh, you know, it's, it is it, it, it is Friday. We ain't got no job. I'm going to get you high today. High on football. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. The famous words of uh, Mr. Ocho Cinco. I've done half of Viagra, full can of Red Bull. Here we go. <laughs> right? Oh, man, let me let me fit this microphone. I, I don't know what's going on with my mic- microphone. It's, it's getting ready to fall again. Anyways, Hoffy. Just take a back seat. I'll take over from here. All right. Go for it. I'm still trying to dry off from last night's preseason game. Yeah, so uh, Hoffy had a chance to go to the Houston Texans versus the New England Patriots preseason game. Hoffy, uh, I have some notes to to talk about that of like what we've learned from the game and like whatnot. But just the overall experience of a preseason game. I've never been to a preseason game. Would you go to another preseason game if you had the opportunity to go? So as, as season ticket holders were uh, given the, you know, a preseason games, you get to go there, you get to interact with some of the players, get some autographs. So it's fun to take the kids, you know, because the, the cost of tickets these days are, are asinine. So it's nice to go with the kids. They always have little activities going on with the kids. They get autographs and all that stuff. So it was a, it was a good time. So Kept would you would you do it again? I mean, I do it every year, but yeah. I do it for the kids. But as far as going out, spending the money, doing it, no. Uh, yeah, it, it's it's about a hundred bucks, even even for a preseason game. Oh, really? Wow. If I'm going to spend that kind of money. I'm going to a real game. Oh yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, like, I do like the preseason, like the fact that you can you know see players that might be up and coming. Right? I mean, like. Uh, you know, um, who, who was the receiver for the uh, Patriots that got hurt? Second preseason of the, of the game last year, broke his collarbone and kind of had like a, uh, I think it's like number 11. I, f- I forget his name, but he had a hell of, What's that? Yeah. Tyquan Thornton. Yeah. Or, or mean, Thornton. mean, like you, you, you wouldn't know that this guy runs a 4 2 40 yard dash and that, that can run at the speed of sound if. If you did not have the opportunity to watch that preseason game, so I mean, you 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 do get a chance to really see some players that could possibly make him some noise, some maybe some late round fantasy draft picks, that kind of kind of thing. And Hoffy brings out another jersey, man. What what are you made of money? You got a and 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 is that a Thornton little, jersey? Little autograph, yeah. Jersey. There you go. See, we were just talking about it. I had no idea you even had his jersey, but there you go, man. Bada bing, bada boom. But I do want to talk about this Houston Texans game because there were a lot of eyes on the Houston Texans and CJ Stroud in general. So uh, yep. when we sit back and we address the CJ Stroud Houston Texans saga that is happening. I was nowhere impressed with C.J. Stroud's performance yesterday. He just, I mean, he 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 honestly looked like Justin Fields out there running for his life play after play after play. Now, I'm not trying to knock C.J. Stroud's, you know, game in general, but if the Houston Texans want to have success this season, they better fix that offensive line real freaking quick. Yes, I do know that Titus Howard is out, maybe out for the whole season with some um, with a injury. I forgot w- w- what exactly his his injury is. We talked about it late last week. I think I, I think it was like a broken wrist or or something. But 
if D'Amico Ryans really wants to bring in that 49ers run it down your throat, pound, 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 pound offense that they ran over there in San Francisco, they got to figure out this this offensive line. Hoffy, you being there live, like especially like that very first drive or drive or two, what, what what was your overall look thought of the Houston Texans offensive line? Was it that bad, or was the Patriots defense just that good? I mean, the way I mean, the Patriots didn't really even play their starters. Right. The way I look at it, though, is is Belichick always gives quarterbacks trouble, especially in you know their rookie their rookie year. You know when when they're still learning the game. However, it was preseason, so uh, did he even come out with all of his? No, it was his a basic bag of tricks. Base four. But, uh, three, I mean, he was go. two of four, 13 yards, two rushes for six yards. I mean, he he looked scared. And then on the interception, which that needs to be fixed, he stared down his wide receiver, and you know, Jalen Mills was easily able to to step in there for that interception. So he's definitely going to have to fix that. He can't be staring down your receivers in in the NFL. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, like obviously, the, there there's a huge learning curve. Uh, quarterback is probably one of the hardest positions to translate from college to the NFL. That is why we see so many quote bust in the in the NFL because it is so hard to translate. So, um, obviously, CJ Stroud needs some work. That uh, Houston Texans offensive line needs some work. But let's look at the New England Patriots offensive side of the ball. They were really pushing the ball down the field in this new Bill O'Brien's offense. Like, you know, like I like Bailey Zappi throwing to, um, was it uh, Thornton, right? And he went up and he got yep. the ball for like a good 30 yard catch. I mean, it like, and they threw in like a lot of screens. It, 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 it's like it almost seemed on the surface like the nickel and dime offense ways of the past is out in New England. So, Hoffy, with with that being said, we have been here and we both agree that Mac Jones is that nickel and dime game managing type of quarterback. In this Bill O'Brien offense, is Bailey Zappi a better fit than Mac Jones? I'm going to ask you because you are the Patriots guy and you are a Mac Jones guy. Could Mac Jones' job be in jeopardy? No, and I, th- I think that was clear at the fact that he didn't touch a ball yesterday. Uh, I mean, if, if Z- Bailey Zappi continues to go 12 of 14, 79 yards, I mean, no touchdowns, but, I mean, th- they didn't really – they put up nine points, three field goals. Right. But, uh, no, I, I don't think Mac Jones' job is in jeopardy. Uh, so – when I sit back and I first saw the game in general there, when they started to, like, push the ball down the field, as a Patriots rooter this year, like, I don't know if they, like, even if, like, if that's a root. I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm rooting for the Patriots, right, because I actually have them doing really, really well. I actually have them going to the ASC championship game before we break it down again. We'll see what happens. But that experience. Explosive type of offense as a Patriots rooter, right? I'm kind of excited about it. I'm like, man, could the Patriots actually be that 11 12 win team? Now, is Mac Jones that guy? I don't know. Because, Hoffy, we have never seen Mac Jones really be forced to push the ball down, down the field, right? His rookie year. His job was simply not to F it up, right? I mean, we have a good defense, and we're in, quote, rebuild or re- or retool mode. Whatever happens, happens, right? And that's and they happen to sneak into the, the playoffs. Last year, the worst offensive coordinator ever in the history of the NFL. You say what you want. It was freaking terrible. So uh, are we going to see a new Mac Jones, you think, Hoffy, in 2023? Are we going to see Mac Jones – Open the field up, push the ball down, down, down the field. No longer be the game manager, but a game controller. Yeah, I think Bill O'Brien is one. I mean, we've discussed it. One of the best offensive coordinators. He's got to put whoever he's got behind center in position to 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 do their best. Um, but I do think that having Thornton with his speed, you're going to have a couple other. You know, Kendrick Bourne. 
you got a couple good wide receivers there with Speed Parker. So yeah, I think about you'll Juju. be able to. Uh, I, yeah, Juju Smith Schuster. Yep. You got, you know, a, a nice tight end to check it down to. You got a, a power running back. So yeah, I think they're going to be able to push the ball downfield. But I, I do think a lot of their game is going to be, you know, power on first down with their their big running back. And second and third down are going to be, you know, you're going to get your slants, your Julian Edelman routes and everything like that. But, but yeah, I think we'll be able to see Mac Jones be able to push the ball down the field now that he's actually got some viable receivers. Very, very, very true. So this is a question that I got to ask the Patriots fans. After watching this preseason game, yes, your starters did not play defense or offense, but are you optimistic now? Are you more optimistic in 2023? You're like, hey, maybe, just maybe, we do have a legit chance of making some noise. Hoffy, I got to ask you, since you are the Patriots guy, I mean, obviously you're going to say, yeah, Super Bowl, right? Oh, ha, 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 ha. But, but take your fan hat off and be optimistic. Be a realist. Realistically, after this preseason game, are you – Stock up or stock down on the New England Patriots? I mean, I'm stock up. I really was thinking that maybe they were going to be in the cellar, but I really think you could look at any of the four teams in the AFC East and see any of those four winning the winning the division. I mean, it's going to probably be one of the toughest divisions, I think, in, in all of football this year as far as, mm. you know, competition-wise. Yeah, uh, so... I believe it is a three-team race in the AFC East. The I think the Jets are just on the outside looking in. I don't care. I don't like the addition of Aaron Rodgers. I don't like the addition of Randall Cobb. I do like the addition of Alan Lazard. Le, 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 Le yeah. But I feel like the Jets are a team right now as they are basically saying, we are all in. We're going to put $5 million on Black Knight and Black Knight. 19 now if it hits hey we are ghosts haha ha, look at us but if it misses like yeah we're gonna be irrelevant for the next 10 years so as a east guy and you have seen the jets at the bottom of the cellar year after year after year do you think maybe the jets went all in on the wrong person meaning aaron Rodgers? if 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 the Jets could like play this out again, would they go after somebody like a Trey Lance? Would they go somebody after like a maybe a Kirk Cousins? That's a little bit younger. Teddy Bridgewater, maybe Dak Prescott. I, I mean, I go back and forth on are the Jets going to be competitive or not, and, and be in that four team race, or is it going to be a three team race? I, I think that they still believe in Zach Wilson. And and they're like you said, they're going black nineteen on, on this year, but hoping as well, even if it doesn't pan out, Zach Wilson is able to learn from you know Aaron Rodgers, similar to what we kind of saw Jordan Love last year when he came in and, right. and looked much like Rodgers. I mean, I, I think they have a relationship. I think that's pretty well known. Um I don't think he's gonna be giving Aaron Rodgers hell every day and trying to take you right. know, competing right. for his job, like he says, but I, I I think that um, he, he could be a viable coaching option to Zach Wilson. So if this year does fail, as long as they get something out of Zach Wilson in the future, maybe they can look at it as it really wasn't a failure because, let's be honest, they've sucked nuts for the last 20 years. So <laughs> what's another, you know, one year? True, true. Like, I can see that and I can understand that. But on the same time, you – got in on this Aaron Rodgers train. You bought into all the hype. You made your fan base go crazy saying Aaron Rodgers was the missing piece. Yada, yada, yada. But then we're like, Aaron Rodgers has got to bring in this guy. He's got to bring in that guy. So now we're looking at the Green Bay Packers 2.0, basically. And as Nana says over here on Facebook.com, she says the Jets have been counting on Aaron Rodgers for some time. I'm just, I am not sold that Aaron Rodgers is that guy. Now, if we look back to what, three years ago, Hoffy, four years ago, when Nathaniel Hackett was the coach, the offensive coordinator for the Green Bay Packers, Aaron Rodgers did win those back to back MVPs. However, that is now two years removed. 
do we think Nathaniel Hackett and Aaron Rodgers magic can happen again? Can that, you know, kind of gunslinger mentality come to New York and be successful? I don't think it can because of everything that you said. The East is very competitive. When Aaron Rodgers won those back-to-back MVPs, the NFC North was kind of blah at best, right? I mean, you had the Bears that were blah. You had the Lions that did not have Dan Campbell. They were just, uh, wasn't Matt Patricia the coach? And the Vikings were just a sub-500 team. They were not very good. So, I'm gonna put you on the put you on the uh, fire. I I, I I got a gun to your head, and you have to pick a MVP. Is Aaron Rodgers going to be an MVP candidate this year, Hoffy, with the New York Jets? Gun to my head. Gun to your head. You have to pick. Put me out of my misery. I'm gonna take him as MVP candidate. Really? So you think Aaron Rodgers is going to be MVP in 2023? Yeah, because if I say so, then maybe he'll suck. And, and, you know, and it, it's a win-win for me and my Patriots. But if he is an MVP candidate, then I look like an absolute stud. Oh, oh my lord! So it's a win-win situation for me. I but guess yeah, I, I think he's Skip Bayless, ladies and gentlemen. Skip magic. Bayless. Yes, <laughs> yes. Skip Bayless. <laughs> but but, but it, no, I'm looking at their schedule. Yeah. They got the Commanders. That's an easy game, I think. They got the Browns. The Texans, the Falcons. So they got some easy games. I think the Raiders will be a good game. Um, they got the Giants. They should win that. But they also, they also have the Eagles. They got the Chiefs. They got the Cowboys. You know, Buccaneers is an easy game. I mean, they got a they got some soft games. But right again, they're going to have you know six games in the in the AFC East. When when you are a fourth place team, you get a fourth place schedule, and that's where they're easy games come from now there are no quote easy games in the nfl but they actually do have the 17th ranked uh uh, strength of schedule going into the nfl into the 2023 season obviously that will change as teams improve or d d improve right decrease oh nana with the fire she says wait 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 is hoffa waffling waffling as why it would do yeah yeah we forgot about the hashtag Waffle Hoffa. You give us an answer. You you can't waffle around it. I love it. I said he's going to be an MVP candidate. Yeah, but 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 you're like well, it's a it's a win win. So I can say this, but then I really mean this. And not, uh, okay, I truthfully think with Lazard, <laughs> with their, their you know their their sophomore wide receiver Garrett Wilson. They, yeah, Garrett Wilson. They got a good, good running back. Yes, I think that he's got all the tools in place. To recapture that, you know, Hackick Rogers magic, and he will be an MVP candidate. There you go. No waffling around here on the man hour, Hoffy. You should, you know, the rules. Oh, wait, the rules do not apply to Hoffy. I think you said about half hour ago, right? No rules for you. Don't but you so it. you said that the AFC East could possibly, or sorry, is the most competitive division in football but then you brought up the Cleveland Browns and that triggered my old memory there and I think the AFC North is going to be the most competitive football in or sorry the most uh, most competitive division in football uh, in the AFC AFC side it 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 doesn't matter the I think the AFC North can legitimately have all four teams make the playoffs this season with the Cleveland Browns or Baltimore Ravens being the bottom seller of that division. There's still going to be eight, nine win team, I think. So there are a lot of, quote, overrated quarterbacks out there. We I put Lamar Jackson in that category. Jalen Hurts could possibly fall into that category as well. But we got into a, a debate on Facebook last night and somebody said that Deshaun Watson is the most overrated and overpaid quarterback in the NFL. So when we think of overrated and overpaid, uh, I mean, I think we have to talk about the Deshaun Watson because ever since he signed that huge deal, right, the richest contract in the NFL, he has not done very well for the Cleveland Browns. Granted, he sat out for, what, 560-some days he played like four games last year and looked dog shit. So, Hoffy, we have to ask this question. Is Deshaun Watson in a must-prove-it year? 
Does Deshaun Watson have to prove that he is a top 10 quarterback in the NFL to avoid this overrated, overpaid quarterback? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, 58% completion percentage last year, you know, seven touchdowns, five interceptions, a 79, you know, QB rating when, you know, his career rating is uh, 102, you know, 67% completion ratio, 111 touchdowns and 41 interceptions. So, yeah, I, I think he needs to get back to what he was, and I think he will. I mean, a, a full year under his belt of being able to learn the system and everything. Uh, but I, I'm not going to say he's the most overpaid quarterback when, you know, he's put in of his, his five years, he's got four good years. Jalen Hurts got paid off of one year. Uh, true. Uh, so so when we think of overrated, overpaid, are you putting Jalen Hurts in that category? Or are we going to waffle around that answer too? No, I think he will earn every dollar. But as of right now, yes, he's he's overpaid for his body of work. True. So we, we go around this world, Hoffy, and we see toxic comments each and every day. We we have about 25,000 people that follow us on Facebook, roughly another 3,500 on YouTube. So uh, collectively, we're seeing about 2,000, sorry, 200,000 engagements each and every day. And then we got people like Gary Grimes out that, that want to come into our chat when we're having a civilized conversation and he wants to say, y'all retarded. Gary Grimes, my man, you will officially get the toxic comment of the day. How are we retarded, my man? L give me some of this... Uh, um, Spit some facts. Yeah, spit some facts. What are we retarded about? And he says, holy shit, there's no way you're all of this stupid. Okay. It was a simplized question there, Gary Grimes. I simply asked a question, is Deshaun... Uh, Hoffy, what is uh, what is Deshaun Watson's contract? It, it's, it's, it's like five years, $230 million or something. It, it, it's, it's something stupid, right? This man is getting paid. Yeah, it's the most guaranteed money. Yeah, 200 or actually it might be 300 million. It's 156 mil. How much? 256? 156. 156. Okay. So he's getting paid 156 million guaranteed money to be a 50% completion or Pardon me, that was, his, that was his contract with the Texans. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, it's $230 million for five years. Sorry. Two, $230 million guaranteed money for the next five years. The Browns are in purgatory right now with Deshaun Watson. And his stats last year, Hoffie, were they 50% completion percentage in the last five games that he, that he played from, like, week 13 on? Yeah. Yeah, so um, basically, you are getting – all this money to be an average quarterback. Let's just be honest. Last year, Deshaun Watson was below average. So, Gary Grimes, how are we stupid, my man? Give me some facts. Because the facts are is that Deshaun Watson was not a very good quarterback last year. The facts are that Cleveland Browns are getting 200 or giving Deshaun Watson $230 million for the next five seasons to be a complete wash. And, and, and then Nana... <laughs> Nana, I love you. She says, oh, hell no, nah, Gary. Don't be talking bad about Nana's boys. That's right. Get him, Nana. Ooh, get him. What I want to know is he says, y'all, like, he, he's putting me and you together. But yeah. then his, he's talking about you with your Lamar take. Hmm. I haven't participated in that. Bring that up. I, 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 don't, I, I, don't, like, I don't see it. Can you, can you click on it and bring it on screen? I double clicked it. Uh, I don't know. Oh, there, there, there's. So Gary says, not talking about Watson. I'm talking about your Lamar Jackson take. All right. You, you want to dive into Lamar Jackson? Okay. <sighs> Hoffy, hold, hold my beer. <clears throat> On that note, I'm signing off. I can't, I can't deal with this <laughs> shit. <laughs> so, Gary, let me ask you this question. Okay. Let me push the record button. So. I can um, really gather my thoughts here. When we look at Lamar Jackson, Gary, this is directed towards you, Gary, nobody else. Me and you have a civilized conversation right now. Obviously, you are a Gary, uh, you are a Lamar Jackson fan. 
Are you one of those fans that put Lamar Jackson up on this pedestal that counts him the GOAT when he has even Tekka stepping on the NFL field? This guy is going to be the GOAT. Ah! This is why Lamar Jackson is trash. This is, this is why Lamar Jackson is overrated and overpaid. Okay, the facts are Lamar Jackson does not play very well in January. When it gets cold, Lamar Jackson buttholes puckers and he forgets how to play football. When he does, he does resemble some type of quarterback. It is below average. Statistically, the last three seasons, he has the worst quarterback stats of all the playoff quarterbacks. So every year the quarterbacks make the playoffs, there are 14 of them, right? Statistically, Lamar Jackson is the worst playoff quarterback year after year after year. Does that warrant a $300 million contract? Obviously not. Secondly, yes, Lamar Jackson was a unanimous MVP. Yes, he did have a great sophomore season. But let's just be honest. He won that MVP by default. The only reason why he won that MVP is because is, is because Patrick Mahomes missed three games with the dislocated kneecap that he re- that, that he suffered from the Denver Broncos. Yes, he did lead the league in passing and or sorry in touchdowns, total touchdowns and rushing and like all that crap. I do not want my quarterback to lead the league in rushing. Michael Vick said it the best. When he went to jail, he had to change his game because he was older and he was slower. That what made his career longer, right? Do we see Lamar Jackson changing his game at all? No, we don't. He cannot throw the ball accurately 15-plus yards down the field. He misses wide-open receivers time after time after time. He is a run-first quarterback. Happy feet. Anytime the pocket starts to even get close to him, he wants to scramble and get and get and get away. I'm not taking away his athletic ability. He is very, very fast. He is very, very solid on the athletic side of things. But I do not want my quarterback rushing for, what was it, 6,000 yards in his career in five years. I do not want my quarterback rushing the ball for 800 times in his five-year career. I do not want my quarterback taking hit after hit after hit. I'm paying you $300 million to throw the ball to Odell Beckham Jr. With that being said, stop putting Lamar Jackson up on this pedestal. Since his MVP season, he has not done shit in the NFL. He has played one. He he hasn't played one full NFL season since his MVP year. Injury prone. Can't throw the ball. Can't hit wide open receivers. Can't win games in January. Yes, he is a regular season god. Put that man 12 wins, whatever, right? It doesn't correlate at all to the postseason. That is why Lamar Jackson is overrated and, and overpaid. What are your thoughts on that, Gary? Follow up with that. And I'm tired of this crap like he doesn't have any weapons. He had Hollywood Brown. He had Marquise Brown, right? His cousin, I think, or, or something, or something, something that. Oh, but Holly, but Hollywood Brown wasn't that guy. Whatever, yada yada yada. But when you sit back, Hollywood Brown is now in Arizona. He is going to be the number one receiver. Many people are going to say that he is going to break out and and do this and do this and do this, whatever, right? Uh, same player he was in Baltimore. What makes him so great in Arizona? Oh, that's right. He has a quarterback. He has a quarterback that can throw throw him the ball when he's wide open. And then you have, oh, uh, besides that, who do you have? He's had Willie Sneed, a really good receiver. A really good receiver. Willie Sneed, the fourth. He's still playing in, in the NFL. He's with the 49ers now. Then you had Hayden Hurst, arguably a top five tight end. So don't give me this crap that Lamar doesn't have no weapons. Shut up with that crap. Ouch, says Nana. Sigh. We are we are so different in our opinions of Lamar, but we've known that since this podcast started years ago. <sighs> Hate to admit it, you are right, but I still like Lamar. See, Le- uh, Lamar Jackson is a very, very good player. 
He is not a good quarterback. When the fans put players up on these pedestals, like people have put Lamar Jackson up on this pedestal, it makes the hate for this player grow. That's why people dislike Baker Mayfield or hate Baker Mayfield because of his Hulu commercials and like all this stuff, right? The Cleveland media, the 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 uh, the uh, corporate sponsors put Baker Mayfield up on this pedestal, and he in Baker wasn't performing to that expectations, and so the hate for Baker started to grow. Patrick Mahomes, the hate for Patrick Mahomes is starting to grow as well. Not because he's a bad quarterback. He is arguably one of the best the best quarterbacks out there, but he is on all these head and shoulder co- 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 commercials. He's dope. He like he like he like he's doing this. He's doing that, right? And people are starting to dislike him because you see him so much putting him up on this pedestal. It is what it is. Hulu does have live sports. Although I have not seen that commercial since Baker Mayfield got cut from the Browns. <sighs> Gary, I've seen you been pretty quiet since since then, man. Come on. You want to bring those toxic comments to the show, man? Bring it on, baby. I've given you all the reasons why Lamar Jackson is overrated and overpaid and yada, yada, yada. But now you want to ghost us, Gary. Now you want to be like, oh, my man is actually maybe right. My my man spitting true facts. Tell me why Lamar Jackson is not overrated and overpaid. Give me a reason why Lamar Jackson is one of the greatest quarterbacks in the NFL. Give me reasons why I should be rooting for Lamar Jackson for the next 10, 15 years. He's not going to answer that because I've throwing a wrench in every one of their arguments out there. I've thrown a wrench in every single argument out there. Lamar Jackson doesn't have any receivers. Had, had Hollywood Brown, number one receiver in Arizona, this is his own zone now, Hayden Hurst, Willie Sneed. Uh, well, he's had high school play calling, yada, yada, yada. Uh, that's not my fault. You are the one that signed the contract. You are the one that wanted to stay there. But the high school play calling won you a lot of games in the regular season. But 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 now when it comes down to a debate, L- Lamar Jackson's had no offensive coordinator. Get out of here with that crap. The facts are Lamar Jackson is overrated and overpaid. Those are the facts. The facts are he has had receivers. The facts are he has had a really decent team around him. The facts are he's had a good defense. The facts are is you guys are afraid to admit it. Those are the facts. We out.